there's a lot of pressure on the line in Phoenix now too. Like, you know, Chris 100%. Paul's, Chris Paul's, uh, you know, is ticking in terms of what he's got left. They got, they got all those picks in there. Um, they got to make that work. You know, pff. I mean, I know that, you know, Steph and Clay have years left, but I don't know what's going to happen with Draymond. I don't know what's going to happen with Bob Myers. They got, I mean, they went out and did the Gary Payton portion of the deal because they are trying like crazy to, to salvage it this year. They got a $370 million payroll when you include the tax. Um, yeah, and trading James Wiseman is a very clear sign that the whole two paths nonsense is out the window. Like they're they're trying to win now, which is what they needed to do. It was the right move to make, but you know, again, talk about pressure. There's a lot of pressure there on a lot of fronts. Denver is paying the tax for the first time in 13 years, I think. Um, uh, you know, basically the reason they're in the tax is because they gave Michael Porter that max. Um, but, you know, like if they have a disappointment, I don't know if the Cronkies are going to keep well, that on well, there. Well, and it's like we talked about at the beginning with Jokic, like, there's a huge target on his back going into these playoffs because the last couple of years, he's basically gotten a free pass and he's not going to be getting a free pass if they lose early. So there might not be a player in the league with more pressure on him to me to deliver in these playoffs, especially if he wins this MVP award than him. I, I don't I would know about that. that. He, he yeah. lives in a pretty pressure free world. I'm not <laughs> so, saying I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying the I'm not saying pressure in terms of like he's going to be thinking about it. I mean, in terms of the outside opinion of him and how it's going to be shaped, I think there's there's no player to me that's got a bigger impact on that in this upcoming playoffs than Nikola Jokic if Denver is healthy, because there's going to be a whole lot of people who write him off if they lose in one of the first two rounds of the playoffs and say it's a travesty that he won MVP again and that these regular season stats don't matter. And that it's it's not well, yeah. it's not how it should have gone. You're making a good point there. He's not winning the MVP in sixth place this time. That's not. No. I mean, where, where the postseason is, whatever happens is gravy. I, I agree, and I think what you're dancing around here is there's a. We've talked about how there's going to be an Eastern Conference team that gets knocked out in the first round, that's going to really have a a bad season on its hand because either Philly, Milwaukee, or Boston is going home. After second round, round two. Yeah. Second round. But, yeah. but the, but the, but there's even less success. You know, there's even less opportunity for success in the West. Cause we didn't talk about the Clippers yet. The right. Clippers are, they've got a, even a higher payroll. They're like, a, you know, yeah. something like, well, there's, there's obviously massive pressure on them to win too, obviously. And there's not enough success to go around. And at the deadline, Dallas pushed in more Phoenix pushed in more. Um, Phoenix pushed I in think, most. Oh yeah. my God. I mean, you know, the thing about Phoenix, you know, I wrote the story with, with Ramona Shelburne about the, the way the trade went down. You know, the last piece to agree to the, the part of the trade was Jay Crowder. The Phoenix didn't want to put Jay Crowder in the deal because they had an offer on the table from Milwaukee for five second round picks. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that those second round picks really mean anything. But my point is, is that Indiana went or, um, or Brooklyn went around and made the deal with Milwaukee for those five firsts, mm -hmm. five seconds. Although they offloaded, they have to pay Indiana a little bit to take them. But in in a way, you could say that Durant cost four firsts, Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, and five second round picks. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because because that's what they because they could have done that deal separately if they had just held on to Jay Crowder. And like, by the way, Bridges, it's going to be fun to see how good he is, how good yep. he can be as the focal point of the team. Obviously, 45 last night uh, in the Nets win. I'm not wow. saying he's going to do that on a regular basis. but No, I but he's going to get choices. How good he is. Absolutely. He's going to get every opportunity to explore the studio space on that team. They don't have anybody. That he's he's clearly their best player. They're going to be letting him try to go. Jock Vaughn said the other day before his first game in, at MSG against the Knicks that they saw how he played with Devin Booker out did some stuff to Chuck Vaughn, didn't think he could do. They were going to keep trying to push him in that direction. Like you said, he's not scoring 45 every night, but they don't have a lot of guys who could score. Mikhail Bridge is going to get every chance to prove he could be a 25-point well, a game thing. player so for sure. So what Mikhail, what Mikhail Bridges did is he went from a corner player to a wing player. You know, mm -hmm. there are a couple of different ways you play. I mean, it's not pigeonholed, but you're either 
a defensive guy, a defensive specialist who then runs to the other side and stands over there in the corner to space the floor. That's what he's done most of his career. And he's been good at it. Well, this is his chance to prove he's Chris Middleton. That to me is what it is. Right. Can he level up to be that kind of player? And, you know? and the difference between making 40 million like Chris Middleton and making 20 million like Mikhail Bridges is whether you're a corner three and D guy or you're a wing three and D guy where they can throw you the ball and let you put it on the floor and you can get your own shot. Or they can set you a screen. You can create for right. the people. Bridges showed that while Booker mm-hmm. was out. And I, I mean, I think they do the deal for him anyway, because even as a, as a three and corner player, he was really valuable, but like, I saw this a little bit in the playoffs last year. Yeah. I thought he had this and I didn't think he was going to be a 40 point scorer like that, but, um, but yeah, I mean, and, and by the way, like if Bridges goes on and becomes an all-star, like the F- the Phoenix will feel that like Phoenix will feel that. Yeah. So I, I do think, but if they win a for, championship, if they win a championship, they'll right. You know, it will yeah, be I mean that's the price that's the bar. That's the bar for that trade. I mean that franchise has won a lot of games over a lot of years. They've never won a title, right? They've had a ton of great teams, made the finals multiple generations, right? Back in the seventies with Barkley, obviously a couple of years ago. The one thing they've never done is win a title. You make a trade like this to win a title. If you do, you get like you say, Brian, you win one championship. You don't have to say you're sorry. Trade's a success. If they don't win a championship, trade's probably going to be a failure. Like that's, you make a deal like that, you know, I know Zach was saying the other day on TV, it's not fair to hold that bar to people, but it's not about being fair. Reality. That's that's the reality of the situation. You make that so trade, got, that's what you're trying to do. They've got new billboards on the outside of the Footprint Center in Phoenix, and it's four players, you know, Durant, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton. Surprise is like, Tory okay. Craig. <laughs> That's our core, right? That's what they're basically announcing. So we talked about how there's a possibility of maybe trades in the future in Dallas to set this up. We'll see. How, by the way, Aiton's had a couple of spectacular games yeah. the last few weeks. They're playing a lot better. They've won. Yeah, six the way, he was seven. playing great going into the trade deadline too. Speaking of Brooklyn, he had a massive game in Brooklyn to beat uh, to beat the Nets when um, uh, when Devin Booker was just coming back from his hamstring injury. Yeah, he had a couple of 35-15 games on that road mm-hmm. trip. So that's one thing I'll say about Phoenix. So obviously they got the, the major chips in the in the middle of this year. I'm not saying Devin Booker is um, going to be a bona fide all-star for the next eight years, but he is a player that people value. And his contract is not onerous. I know that the Suns didn't see him as a max player. Are you, you're, yeah, you, you're all over the place today. You said Devin Booker. You were talking about DeAndre Ayton. Yeah. Okay. I was just to, say, woo. You're like Devin Booker, people. People Devin out of Booker, league don't know if Devin Booker's going to be an all star. It's like okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry, thank you for saving me there. No, it's all thank good. You for I, me. I suspected Devin. that's what no. you were doing. Yeah. Thank you, DeAndre. Um, he's been. I don't want to say he's going to be a perennial all star, but his his contract is not something the teams are afraid to take on. And that could be. You know, we'll see how this Suns rollout goes. But just because they've traded all their picks doesn't mean they've emptied what they can do. They still have some, some, some options ahead of them. Plus I think after not paying the tax themselves for more than a decade, I think Matt Ishbia is going to pay the tax and I think they're mm-hmm. going to be willing to spend more money and, and sign more free. They won't be able to go out and, you know, big game hunt, but they can add to that. So all that's going to play out uh, this spring. It should be interesting. All right. I don't want to hold, hold on, hold on. I just do yeah. want to say something real quick. You talk about all the pressure on Joker and I understand what you're saying. He's in a very similar situation that Giannis was the year that Giannis won it, uh, won the championship. Now, Giannis didn't end up winning his third MVP. As Bucks fans remind me, I, I talked about kind of the standard, the historic standard of a three-time MVP for a guy who'd never been in the finals. Um, he didn't win the MVP, but he, he, he won the championship that year where there was all the weight on his shoulders. So I get what you're saying about Joker. Chris Paul's got an immense amount of pressure on him. Like Chris Paul is 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 kind of uh, he's deeper into his career, but he's kind of at that you know that dirt before the 2011 run situation where it's like it's the one thing that he has never accomplished, and he has had some epic playoff flameouts um, as recently as last season. Now he doesn't have to carry the team, but they need Chris Paul to be really damn good if they're going to make a championship run. And I do think that he's got as much pressure as anybody.
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.